there, this is Andrew bringing you another Keyforge deck reveal and review. This is going to be a World Collide deck that I got for uh, winning at a recent Chainbound event. Um, I was using a real good deck, so I can't really claim a lot of credit myself for it. Uh, looks like it's going to be Untamed, Dece, and Lobos. So that could be pretty interesting. M. Yendel, the Tower Maestro. Uh, you know, I had a Yendel before that had, I think, Untamed and Dece, and it also had Mars. It was a it was a Genka deck. I think it was Yendel. So I had Martian Generosity Key Abduction. This looks like a, a weird coffin thing, almost. Pretty interesting. Um, yeah, these, these could be good houses. We'll see what we get. With Logos, I'm hoping to burn through my deck pretty fast. Have some acceleration. Maybe some Amber Control because that's a thing that Logos does in Worlds Collide. In, uh, in Dece, I am hoping for some Amber Control, some Board Control, some uh, Opponent Control, some Deck Control maybe. I would love... Uh, yeah, I've been enjoying... Purge Combos in Dece. They can be pretty cool. And then in Untamed, I'm hoping for some like Amber Ramp. Um, I'm hoping to not get too many Song of the Wilds, and, uh, if I do, to at least get some Ghost Talks, but let's see what we get. Alright, we're in D's first, we get Binding Irons. Action, it gives your opponent three chains. Two of those. Uh, I've warmed up to this lately, but I still don't love it. Then we have Buzzle, three power beast with Skirmish, and play, fight, you may purge one of Buzzle's neighbors if you do ready Buzzle. Uh, yeah... This can be good in a pinch. It also is a way to thin out your deck sometimes, if that's what you want to do. Um, Dendrix is a 5 power demon. With fight, your opponent discards a random card from their hand. Ooh, we have Draining Touch. Destroy a creature with no amber on it. That's a pretty solid creature, you know, board control. There are about two of those. My brother-in-law got a deck with four. We'll see if I get four. <laughs> Uh, not four, but I'd get Festering Touch, which gives you a bonus amber. Choose up to two creatures, deal one damage to each chosen creature, and if that creature was already damaged, you deal three instead. It's real good for plinking wards, and it's also really good for finishing things off. Two of those. Ooh, interesting. Wow, three of the That's a lot of Festering Touches. That is real interesting. Um, especially because you, you have three of these in your hand. You can pretty likely kill at least two creatures, right? Because you're going to do one, another three, another three. Uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting utility there. Lilithal is a five power demon with fight, reap, capture, one amber. And then we have misery, exploit. Ooh, that could also be really good with the festering touches. Uh, when you play it, you gain one amber for each damaged enemy creature. Well, if you just sprayed six creatures with one damage each with a festering touch, then, wow, misery exploit, misery exploit could be good. Oh, Wretched Doll's not good. It's an artifact that says, uh, action, if there's a doom counter in play, destroy all creatures with doom counters, otherwise put a doom counter on a creature. It's so slow. It's just too slow. All right, uh, so we did not see Amber Control here. The one thing we have is the Lilithal, but uh, not much Amber Control. Really, that's almost no Amber Control. We do have some deck control with the Binding Irons, but not the Purge game. We can purge some of our own. What we're seeing more of, actually, is just like board control with the Draining Touch and the Festering Touches. So, interesting. And overall, not too, not too impressive in my opinion, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what we get. Cutthroat Research is an action with a bonus Amber. When you play it, you steal two Amber if your opponent has eight or more Amber. Good if we can boost the amber cost somehow. Daughter is a two power cyborg scientist that's elusive and says during your draw card step, refill your hand to one additional card. This is real good. I hope we get more. We didn't. That's okay. Hapsis can also be very good. It's a five power mutant scientist. It says after an enemy creature is destroyed fighting Hapsis, ward Hapsis and draw a card. Uh, importantly, that means that if your opponent attacks it, and their creature dies and Hapsis doesn't, it gets warded and you draw a card. So, pretty crazy. Information exchange. Steal one if your opponent stole from you on, your pre on their previous turn, steal two instead. 
Ooh, we got two of those. Ooh, okay. Three of those. Wow, that is the most information exchanges I've seen in a deck. That is a lot of steals in, in Logos. Wow. Quant is a three power human scientist. With Reap, you may play one non Logos action card this turn. That could be great with the uh, Festering Touches, Draining Touches, and Binding Irons. You're getting them out of your hand. You are getting the value out of them. You're drawing something else. Sanitation Engineer, four power cyborg scientist with Hazardous One, and Reap, discard a card from your hand. We have Anomaly Exploiter, uh, which is an artifact that. Exhaust to destroy a damaged creature. Also good with the Festering Touch, right? If we do damage to something on the Deast turn and then kill it on the Logos turn, that's not bad at all. Seismo Entangler has you choose a house, and during your opponent's next turn, creatures of the chosen house can't be used to reap. That's uh, when it, you exhausted it. Whoa, we got two of those. Wow. If you have both those out, I mean, wow, you can use them to name different houses and... Uh, really control your opponent pretty hard and then a strange gizmo this is a weird deck this is a weird deck okay so strange gizmo is an artifact with an amber it says after you forge a key destroy each creature and artifact blow it all up interesting all right let's see what we have in our untamed uh deep wood druid is three power elf witch with deploy and play reap fully heal a neighboring creature that could be good with the hapsis maybe um yeah. Maybe the Malice of uh, the Dexter. Hmm. Harmonia is a two-power human witch that's elusive, and it says after you play a creature, if there are more enemy creatures than friendly creatures, gain an amber. Um, that could work out here. Two of those. Wow. That's a lot of potential if, if it worked out. Uh, Imprinted Marmook is a three-power beast with elusive, and it makes your keys cost one less. Ooh, and we have it with Key Charge. That could be pretty good. I mean, a turn where your opponent has more creatures than you and you do, like, Harmonia, Harmonia, and Freedom Room with Key Charge, you're, in, you're pretty happy. Uh, yeah. Regrowth. Ooh, Regrowth for the Imprinted Remook or the Harmonia. Gain an Amber, return a creature from your discard pile to your hand. That's pretty good. Unnatural Selection is an action with a bonus Amber. You choose three friendly creatures and three enemy creatures, and then you destroy each other creature. Ooh, and Grasping Vines is good for artifacts. Um, gain an Amber and return up to three artifacts to their owner's hands. If you know you're about to forge, I mean, could imagine a scenario where you play the Grasping Vines, return the Strange Gizmo to your hand, and Key Charge or something like that. Um, interesting. Oh, Mimicry. Oh, that made the deck a lot better in my mind. Cool. Oh, Panpaka Inga. Ooh, that changes the equation on a lot of these things. Suddenly, Imprinted Mermook is very big. Suddenly, uh, Hapsis is very big. Suddenly, Daughter can survive a lot. Uh, you know, even the you, oh, even the Dendrix is big now, and the Buzzle is a 5 power with Skirmish. Interesting. Very interesting. And lastly, we have Perilous Wild, which gives you a bonus amber and destroys each elusive creature. Uh, we have some elusive creatures here, so we'd have to be careful when we deploy this, right? The Mermook, the Harmonias, the Daughter, all elusive. So just have to be, you know, careful when you deploy that. But we did not get Wild Wormholes or anything, so we're not going to, you know, play it unless we know we're playing it. This, compared to the last Logos deck I opened up, this is not very speedy. Daughter can do a bit. Half this can make you draw, but um, it's not going to be crazy. Uh, we're not increasing our opponent's key costs at all in here. So you maybe can threaten a little bit with capture and steal between the information exchanges and the uh, Lilithal. But other than that, there aren't a lot of reasons for them to go to 8 for the cutthroat research. Uh, so I don't think that's going to fire very often. I feel like this has a lot of things that don't necessarily work super well together, aren't necessarily cooperating with each other. Um, good cards on their own, but uh, and the, the, this is good untamed. This is real good untamed, but the Logos is a bit disappointing. Oh, three steals, it's interesting, but overall it's a little disappointing. And the Dece, I'm just not sure what to make of it, but it could be good. It could, it could be. So I guess I have to play it and find out 
as one does. Wow, and quant mimicry, that could be pretty good too. So we'll just have to see. Uh, anyway, yeah, that was M. Yendel, the Tower Maestro. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll get out and forge some keys.